I, I thought Colin Farrell was was a was a perfect choice because I um, I do picture somebody when I when I read this the script and I I, I can't help it. So um, one of the things that attracted me to the the script and doing the film uh, was 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 all kind of tied up in all, what also attracted me about Colin playing playing the role, and that is that that uh, when I read the screenplay. It reminded me of the version of Quaid, the kind of tone of Quaid that I remember from the short story that I read in college, and um, and when I was reading, it was just that that you know person, and, and uh, you know I always tried to give a face to that, you know, and a voice to that that page, and that was that was uh, that was Colin uh, for me. So uh, I was. I, I was really fortunate to get him. I didn't think that we could. I, I, I'd heard that he, uh, you know, he'd been offered more commercial type of films, and he's shied away from them. So I didn't know how likely it was. Um, so I just made a point of just doing, you know, everything I could to, to convince the guy that, uh, you know, that that this was, you know, a tone that that he would, um, uh, that hopefully he would he would, he would be on board for. On your feet now! This is all a mistake. I'm nobody. Hands on your head! No! The most challenging scene to shoot, I would say, uh, kind of twofold. The, the most challenging technically was the car chase. Um, it was, uh, it, I wanted to shoot it as a practical, as much of a practical chase as I possibly could. A lot of people just assume that it's CG, it's not. We, we built seven of these hover cars that we put the actors in, we built them on top of, of other uh, race car chassis that we would actually then erase, but they would drive them and, and the, the, the hover car would, would, would tilt and bank independently, but they would go 45, 50 miles an hour. We shot it like, I shot it like I would shoot any modern day car chase. And then we put in the world around it. So being aware of what the world was like, where the street level was, at all times during shooting was, was very complicated, and the rigs were just very complicated. The most challenging, dramatically, was the lobby scene where his friend comes back in, where Harry comes back in to set the stage and tell him that he's in a fantasy. And that courtroom battle, um, it was one of the reasons why I did the movie. I love that scene. It's what, it's what the movie's about to me, that scene, is that, that where you really question fantasy versus reality, but it was a very long scene to keep the tension, which is three characters that don't move. You know, just the um, just just from a directing standpoint, to keep that intensity, uh, you know, it was challenging, but also, but I mean, challenging in, in a in a good way. You're not really here. You're still back at recall, strapped to a chair. He's lying. Just shoot her. This is not a delusion. Kill it, damn it. Shoot. I wish I could take credit for the conception of it. Um, I, I actually came into the process after the first draft had been done. So Kurt Wimmer, the original writer, he um, he had already uh, you know decided to do the take that's 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 on Earth and leave Mars behind. And the reason that he had done that is he was influenced by uh, the original short story. I'm not sure how many people are aware. Never it doesn't go to Mars. Uh, that's something in the original movie took creative license on, but the original story is all about a threat on Earth, and so he, 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 he stuck closer to that. It's obviously we enjoy, uh, you know, working with each other. So, um, you know, it's you, certain actors that you work with that you really, um, you know, what you're going to be able to, you know, to, to get from them, you have a trust with them. I work with Bill Nye, actually. I've worked with Bill Nye more times than I've worked with Kate, but I'm not married to Bill Nye, so nobody really asks me about that. Um, you know, and there's directors that work with the same actor over and over, and um, so it's just something that, um, the reason that probably that we ended up getting married is uh, because we, we, you know, agree and have the same uh, you know, aesthetic, we have the same ideas about movies that we see that we're not involved in. We come back and we rarely disagree about movies that we like and characters and choices that are made. So that naturally has, you know, its its own, um, you know, advantages when doing a movie together. Advice to young filmmakers, I, I was the same advice that was given to me, and that is just um, d get all of the excuses of maybe why you can't get started and just 
throw those aside and just start shooting something. Even as small as it is, having no money, I started making movies when I was 11 years old and just grabbed the video camera with my friends. The first few obviously were, were just, you know, they're terrible, they're, they're what they are. But with each project, um, you learn something. There's no way that you can, no matter what project you do, if you see it through, there's no way that you don't learn something. And then you put that in the next project. You learn something from that, you put it, and that's how you learn, um, I, I think. And so you just, you just do it. And the, um, uh, nobody will ever take a chance on you if you don't have something to show, in my opinion. You know, you can get as far as you possibly can with talking the, the game of what you wanna, of what you wanna do. You maybe even open a few doors. But at the end, if you don't have anything to show, it's very hard for people to take the, take the risk. We're gonna need your seatbelt on!